In this video, we're going to do a quick tour of the Pixlr photo editing application. Now, a lot of my videos I show uh, how to do things in Photoshop, but not everyone has Photoshop, and it is a fairly expensive program. And uh, the Autodesk Pixlr application, which is also available on the iPad and an Android tablet, can also be used from a web browser on a PC or a Mac. So, uh, we'll go to the Pixlr website. PIXLR.com. I'll put the link in the description down below. And we can create a free account and sign up. And we're going to go launch the Pixlr editor. And we'll open an image from our computer. And we'll choose this coffee mug. And Pixlr is laid out very similar to Photoshop in a lot of ways, and it, a lot of the functionality is the same. Uh, it's not quite as powerful as Photoshop, but it does do a great job at most of the basic functions that other free or low-cost applications lack, or do they don't do them similarly to Photoshop. So a lot of times you can watch Photoshop tutorials, and you'll be able to do the same things in Pixlr in very similar ways. So we're going to do a quick tour of the toolbar over here on the left. And starting at the top is the crop tool. And the crop tool can be used to trim down your image. So if I choose the crop tool and I draw a box around our image, you'll see that it if we get a bounding box. And when we hit enter, it will apply and crop the picture down to the size we, we want. The other tool is the selection tool, so you can select various objects on your uh, image. And then there is the selection tool, which allows you to draw boxes or ellipses, uh, you know, around objects and do various things. So if I want to put it on a, uh, let's say, a rectangle, and let's say I want a duplicate copy of just this section, I can draw my box around it. I can go to Edit, Copy, then I can go to Edit and Paste, and you'll see I have a new layer of that same part of the photograph. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see the Layers box, and you'll see that we started with our background layer, which is locked, of course, and then we have Layer 2, which is the one I just pasted in. And we can do different things with those layers, and we'll get into the, some of the more advanced things in another video, but uh, this is, a, again, this, this is a quick tour. And so I'll undo this and get rid of it and go back to our toolbars. And when we're, if you notice when I'm selected on a tool, this bar up here at the top changes. So you can change different settings. So if you want to change, uh, for example, if you want to set the tool so that it, uh, maintains a fixed size or maintains its aspect ratio uh, as you draw, or if you want to feather the edges or anti-alias, which is uh, kind of the blending around the edges, you can do so. And you can also choose an ellipse uh, tool to do the same things. The lasso tool is one of the really helpful, cool tools that I use a lot. And there, there's a couple of different ways you can use this. This is the freehand lasso tool, and this is the polygonal lasso tool. The freehand lasso tool uh, allows you to just that, simply hold down your mouse button, drag your mouse, and go freehand around an object. And draw a circle and get your selection tool. Uh, once you have that, you can do the same thing as you, you did over here with the rectangular or the ellipse uh, selection tool. The Polygonal Lasso tool is one of the most used tools that I use, and that is when I want to crop out a certain portion of the picture, I can use that by clicking multiple times and draw my lasso around an object along the edges. Now I'll just do this quickly for demonstration purposes, it doesn't have to be exact. just to give you an idea of what you can do. And when you're finished, if you double click on it, it'll kind of close the loop. And again, if I wanted to copy and paste that one part, I could. 
if I wanted to just snip that out and put it in a, into a different picture, I could. And you can do all kinds of, of fun effects with that as well. The Magic Wand tool uh, is a really helpful tool to select certain colors and patterns. So uh, there at the top, you'll see a tolerance setting. And you also see the anti-alias and contiguous. The contiguous, uh, you may want to have it on or off, depending on what you're doing with it. The tolerance uh, adjusts for the variance of the shadings. For example, in this background, you can see I have some darker and lighter spots in different areas. So if I turn this tolerance down to, to say, 5, and I put it on contiguous, and I click here, it can only detect consistency within that area. Now if I turn the top, I'll, I'll turn that off. I'll turn the tolerance up a bit. Let's go up to um, maybe uh, 50 or so. And I'll click in that same area and you'll notice that it selected a lot more around the whole entire picture uh, because the tolerance was turned up and it allowed it to expand out a little bit more. Now if I uncheck the contiguous box um, it will look for that same tolerance and color pattern throughout the entire image, not just what it's touching, you know, pixel by pixel, side by side. So if I click here now, you'll see that it selected things on the inside of the handle as well as the outside, and even selected some of the, uh, the lettering and things inside the, the mug. So this is, uh, the tolerance is too high on this for what I want to do. Uh, if I would put it back on contiguous, and maybe turn it down just a little bit and I click in here, you'll see that I can get rid of that one little, oops, that one little area pretty quickly by clicking on it, selecting it, and then hitting my delete button. And by the way, as each action I'm doing here, as I finish it and show it to you. I'm, I'm hitting undo, which is the, the shortcut is control Z. That's undo for almost every Windows application. So I'm just doing the action and then reverting backwards by quickly hitting undo. The pencil tool is a writing tool. Uh, for example, if I go to plane and I make it uh, six pixels wide, I just can write and do whatever I want with my mouse in the in the photograph. The paint is very similar, only you can have different brush sizes and softness to the brushes and things like that. So if I wanted to paint or anything inside of an image, I can do that as well. The eraser tool is just the opposite of the paint. You have the same brush settings and everything, and you can erase parts of a picture by simply going through the picture. And then there's the Paint bucket tool. Uh, paint bucket tool. If you think about how the uh, wand, magic wand selection works, the paint bucket tool works uh, very similarly. Where if I, I turn my tolerance down and I want to fill, uh, it's only going to fill that much. But if I turn it up, let's say we turn it up to about uh, 30 or so, I'll click in that same area, and you see that it filled in the almost the entire background when I did that. The gradient uh, tool is so that you can fill in certain areas. So let's say if I wanted to do that, uh, you can see you fade from dark to light. And up here, you can adjust that, how much you want it to fade, and what color patterns you want to use. And everything. This is very, very similar to uh, the, the gradient fill tool on uh, Photoshop. Clone stamp tool is a really nice tool, especially if you're doing any photo, ed photo editing on people and their faces. So if they have, you know, maybe a blemish or a mole on their face or something, you can actually use the clone stamp tool to get rid of it. And the way that works is when you have it selected, uh, you can uh, hold your control key and click on an area. And then, and we'll do it right here, and then wherever you click, it's going to duplicate that. So in an area where you might have a blemish or a mole on someone's face, you may click uh, just off to the side of it on the normal skin and then click you know, with control and then click over top of the mole and it'll clone stamp that little patch of skin over top of the mole. You can blend it in, blur it a little bit, you never be able to tell it. The color replace tool, I'm not going to go into that one in this video, but you can replace color. So 
for example, some people use product images and they don't want to make all the different color patterns so they can actually, you can actually replace color in an item with that uh, selection. So if I wanted to uh, theoretically change the world's number one grandma from being a light pink to a yellow, I could do that in the picture and not have to remake that item as to show someone what it would look like. The drawing tool gives you various objects, uh, squares, rounded uh, corner uh, squares, and rectangles, uh, ellipse, uh, lines, and things like that that you can draw and, and insert into your item as well. The blur tool allows you to blur the edges of, and you know, it's really handy to do the edges of images. For example, if I were to uh, remove this entire background along the edges, it, it would be very sharp and not look very realistic. Or if I pasted a section of an image into another photograph, it, you know, it just kind of has that fake look to it because it's, it's not there in the, the picture that it was taken. So you can actually blur the edges of an object just a little bit and um, uh, make it kind of blend in and not look so uh, fake, you know, when, you, when you've done some work on the picture. Uh, there's a sharpen tool as well that'll kind of sharpen the, the pixels a little bit for you uh, in, in just the opposite matter. The smudge tool is just that. It looks like it's uh, maybe wet paint and you, when you run it across it, it will uh, uh, kind of smear just like that. The sponge tool allows you to do some different effects. So if I turn the sponge on and go in here, you can see that it's kind of changing that little, the, the contrast and the color a little bit dark when I, when I sponge that area as well. We got our red eye removal uh, or red eye reduction. So you can actually use it to, to correct red eyes in a photograph of a, of a human or a dog or an animal of any type. There's a bloat tool. So if I wanted to change the look of this just a little bit, make it a little fish-eyed, I can do that. Or I can go the opposite way and bring it inward. The eyedropper tool lets you sample colors. So down here at the bottom, you see this is the color that you're working with right now. So if I choose a paint bucket, I'm going to be painting black. If I choose the eyedropper, I can sample a color from anywhere on the screen and get that same color to use somewhere else. I can also click on that, and that will tell me the various color charts. So a lot of times you might need the uh, six character hex code for a certain color and uh, you can sample your image. And here's your six color hex code. Here's the font tool where you can uh, put text over top of your image. And that's a little hard to see there because I made it the same color. So we'll select that text, choose our color, make it dark. There we go. Just, we'll adjust the size of it up a little bit. And then here's the, uh, this is the, I guess the, the, it's called a hand tool, but it's, it's used to pan around on the screen. So if, you're, if your image is a lot bigger than what your screen is, I'll zoom in, you can actually use the hand tool to move that around very easily. And then of course there's the magnification tool where you can zoom in on a particular area. You can also zoom in and out by using your scroll wheel on your mouse or moving the slider over here. So I hope this video has been helpful to someone to uh, help you get oriented into the basics of editing a photograph using Pixlr. Again, it's uh, all the basic features are very much uh, laid out like Photoshop. And if you learn Pixlr or Photoshop, you should be able to generally use one or the other for all the basic editing features because they are almost identical. Uh, I can't say enough about how impressed I am about how they've laid out the tools and how they use it. So again, if this video has been helpful to you, if you like it, please click like, share, and subscribe. And please uh, feel free to, sh to share it on Facebook and, and other social media. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below.